It is Sunday the 14th of June. one another with words of praise to God. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we invite Jim Gibb to read for us our lesson today, Romans chapter 5. Today's reading is from Romans 5, reading from verse 1. Peace and joy. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. 
but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our contemporary hymn this morning is the hymn, Light of the World, You Stepped Down into Darkness, by the Reverend Tim Hughes. It will be led by David. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we gather to hear your word, that you will speak to us and that we will respond in faith. Amen. My question this morning is, how do we find peace with God through Jesus Christ? Whether you are or were married or not, you probably realise that having a good relationship with someone you love involves certain steps or certain conditions for it to work. Without those conditions, the relationship is bumpy, fragile, almost doomed to failure. I'm not talking about falling in love. I'm taking that as read. I'm speaking about maintaining a good relationship with someone you already care for. And it begins with this. Know yourself and your partner. 
Did you ever discover suddenly that something you did, which you didn't really notice you did, really annoyed your partner? It could be as simple as an irritating sniff or as serious as your habit of exaggerating things. We can all imagine that we are better than we truly are, but to get on with someone over the long term means we need to know ourselves, warts and all. A key relationship involves knowing ourselves better and our partners better. I dare you to ask your partner today, what is the most annoying thing about me? I'm not talking about Stephen, I'm talking about you that's asking the question. Or maybe to be safe, is there any way I annoy you? Ask that question and stand back because you may be surprised at what you hear, at what they say. Hopefully, not too badly. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all the things that Jesus was saying, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. God knows your hearts. And he knows your heart and mine too. And if we are to encounter God and experience his peace, it begins with us realizing the state that we're in, our weakness, our strength, our need of mercy. And to be honest, we're quite weak when it comes to the holiness of God that he desires to see in us. However we see ourselves, God knows our hearts, and we do well to know our hearts too. A second element in maintaining a peaceful and good relationship with our partner is to trust them, to trust them, and to be a trustworthy person ourselves. Secrets can undermine the balance of relationships and prevent them growing. If you cannot trust your partner with money, for they don't tell you what they do with it, or if you cannot trust your partner with their phone because they keep hiding their messages from you, then there's not much chance of a sustained relationship continuing. Trust is essential. If you keep major parts of your life hidden from one another, then trust cannot grow. When Paul told us in Romans chapter 5 that we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word faith comes in the middle of that verse. Faith it is, trust, which enables us to find peace with God. We trust the Lord Jesus and he brings us into relationship with God. I wonder, are we trusting God in these difficult days? If we lay all our hopes, all our confidence on the scientists of SAGE or the politicians in London or Belfast or Dublin, if we rely on our own ability to keep free from infection by washing of hands and by staying away from other people, keeping the two meter rule, if that's the entirety of our faith, then we're not really trusting in God. I'm not speaking about being foolish, about walking in the face of science. I'm talking about trusting in God and doing what's right. The Lord has invited us to follow him and to trust him in every situation. And even when times are hard and when life is under threat, we need to continue to trust him. He has no secrets from us. He has revealed to us his heart and his life, his call and his commandments. And our response needs to be to trust him. When we trust our partners, then we realize that they are able to help us, able to guide us, able to encourage us. 
and we trust them to do so. One of the important things in a relationship, because we know each other, is that the faith is not a blind faith, but that faith recognizes the weakness that one another has. And the great mercy of God's love in Christ for us is that while he knows our weaknesses, he nevertheless continues to love and care for us. Though we were sinners, Christ died for us. God knows us inside and out, and he's able to hear us and respond to our needs today. We trust our Saviour, and we turn to him and ask for his mercy. We have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. In our prayers, in the teaching that we share from Scripture, we're constantly being challenged and reminded and encouraged to share our faith with others, not to boast about it as if we were something special because we had found God, but to rejoice in the mercy that God has found us. And as we share that good news, to enable others to find peace with God as well. I pray that in your relationships, you will know yourself, you will trust your partner, and you will find peace as you grow in love together, submitting to one another in love. And I pray most of all, that each and every one of us will find peace with God as we know ourselves and know him, as we trust him for his mercy and as we walk with him day by day. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through the work of Christ on the cross, we have been justified, made righteous before you. We thank you that by trusting in him, our sins have been set aside. He looks upon us as if we were as good as our Saviour. And as you do so, Lord, so you accept us as your children. Forgive us where we have wandered away, even while on the path of faith, and forgive us for being slow to join that path through some sense of ability to manage on our own. Lord, we confess our sin. We admit our need. We embrace your call and we trust the Saviour. All for the glory of the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let us worship God using the words of the hymn number 636, May the mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Let us affirm together our faith in God, as we say our shortened creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we join together in the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Collect of the First Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer. Our prayers are based on the reading from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 to 38. Jesus went walking in the towns and cities of his day. Lord, help us to recognize the peoples among whom we live and work, and to make efforts to encounter them in whatever ways are possible, showing them your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus went teaching religious people the true nature of the Holy Scriptures. Lord, help us to spend time reading and studying your word so that we can both understand it ourselves and then be fit to explain it to others as parents and grandparents, as teachers and leaders, in friends and families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus went about proclaiming the gospel. Lord, help us to value the good news so much that we are determined to share it with others. As we enjoy your forgiveness, show us how to share that gift. As we experience inner healing, enable us to bring that to others. And as we now trust you for our future, empower us to proclaim that hope. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus went out healing every disease and affliction. Lord, we thank you for the immense gifts of healing you have given to us in the church and in the world. Bless those who have these gifts as they share their medical knowledge and use their spiritual gifts to bring hope to the sick and comfort to the dying, recovery for those who are weak, and hope for those who are struggling. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. With the changing scenes in our political life because of the new decisions made each week by the First and Deputy First Ministers and the Cabinet, with all the changes in life which we are facing, because of this ongoing crisis around the world. We need to have the Lord's direction on us and for us and in our lives. The closing hymn, Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. We thank Michelle and Eric and David for their preparation for the music today.
with the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Those who have watched on some form of internet communication may like to join us for a Zoom coffee time on Tuesday. Now we're going to have two sessions, one starting at 10, mainly for carried up folks, and one at 12 o'clock for those folks mainly from Killeney who would like to join in online as well.